G'day guys, back again, I'm just out on the road, uh, we've got a 2009 Hyundai Santa Fe 2.2 litre turbo diesel that has been towed into the workshop, uh, We it, it, apparently it drives for about 10 minutes then cuts out, um, but it starts straight away after, so I quickly checked it for codes in the, uh, in the workshop bay area and there was no codes at all. Uh, I've, you know, overall it was running okay, so I thought I'd go for a quick drive and um, see if we can make it happen. And I did get it to happen. And as you can see, uh, where what do we have here? P zero zero eight seven fuel rail system pressure too low bank one. So I took a little recording of a couple of pids, obviously. When you get a vehicle that's uh, not currently failing and you want to go for a road test, it's good to get up some basic PIDs. I'm in EOBD because for some reason uh, it actually won't read this PCM whether I've set the vehicle wrong up in here or not, but whatever. Um, now that I've done the screen recording, I'm going to find where I have that recording and then I'll show you what I found. So this is what I want to show you. Unfortunately, I couldn't find where I put my recording. So I've got engine RPM and I've got fuel rail pressure on the screen. So I'm going to go for a drive um, and we'll see if I can show you guys what I see. So the vehicle hasn't cut out, but it is sort of in limp mode. As you can see, look at our fuel pressure. Our fuel pressure in orange is less than our RPM. Uh, obviously, we should be getting up to 150,000 kpa here and flat foot i'm only getting to 110 max um, and that is not cutting out at the moment but you will see and i mean look at our fluctuation it's it's not heaps but it's it, it is more than i would like to see but i'm gonna see if i can get this to cut out again and let's try again and see if i can show you what's going on but basically what's happening is as i'm accelerating fuel pressure plummets and the vehicle comes to a stop so I'll go for one road test back, but that's where we're at. I did see that before, but I couldn't find my recording. So we'll do that and see if we can show you. Otherwise, let's go back to the shop. So you can see it's running good at the moment. Look at our fuel pressure get up when I put my foot down. Well, we didn't get to fail again, but the same code coming back. As you can see, when it was running good, the fuel pressure skyrocketed with the RPM, uh, but we're losing fuel pressure. That's what I saw in the first capture when I did get it to cut out. So I think we're just going to jump out and hook up some stuff, and then let's go for another drive and see what drops out. All right, here's where we're at. Uh, <coughs> after we got the car in back yesterday, we couldn't get it to really fail again, so... Obviously suspecting we've got a fuel pressure issue, the first thing we want to do is check the low pressure side. We've got a low pressure pump in the tank which provides you know, low side pressure, 60 psi to the high pressure side and then the high pressure side converts it into high pressure. So we want to make sure we've got good low side. So I hooked up the fuel pressure tester. Uh, I used the Zenith to command and uh, I did get four bar. 60 psi pressure so obviously it looked like it was okay then I, I turned it off and went to start the vehicle and I, I couldn't get it to start so we had zero pressure so obviously what we wanted to do and now now today's a new day I want to find the fuel pump I want to see if power and ground are getting there I, I had the fuse box cover off and I could hear the relay clicking so it sounds like that might be right I just want to make sure if we fail, if we get power and ground down at the pump, and then we can possibly condemn that pump as being faulty. So let's go down the back. All right, so we've pulled out the back seat. We found the fuel pump. We know that the blue wire is the power for the pump and the black wire is the ground for the pump. I've just got my two-channel wireless oscilloscope, if you've seen me use this before. And um, I'm just going to go to the front. The only reason why I'm using this is because I want to do all the tests from the front. I've got my fuel pressure gauge out there. I've got the Z Zenith scan tool and I've got my scope out there. And we can look at all of it together. Otherwise, you know, if you had a helping hand, you could use a test light, power probe, multimeter, whatever you wanted down here. So let's go to the front of the car with the wireless scope connected and let's do that same test. Okay, we're set up with the Zenith again. We've got the wireless scope, H-scope, if you've seen this before. Pretty kick-ass for having a wireless scope down the other end of the car. 
and we got the fuel pressure gauge. So I'm going to hit start. Oh, that's in that's in the old mode. So I'm going to hit start, and that will turn the fuel pump on. We'll hear our relay click. Let's see if we get power down here. I'm using the ground. I'm only using one channel. Um, so I'm using the power wire and I'm using the ground for the scope lead on the ground. So if we get 12 volts here, we know we're getting power to the pump. And if we get no pump operation and no fuel pressure, which we'll have a look at up there, then we'll know that this needs a fuel pump. And obviously, let's just do that first. So I'll hit start. Bang, 12 volts. We know our power and ground are good. I heard the relay creak click and we've got zero fuel pressure so pretty safe to say we're condemning a fuel pump on this uh, what I will do is I will confirm let me just stop that I will confirm that connectors hasn't got any burnt terminals or you know terminal tension and if that's all good I'm gonna put a new module in it and we will get a new fuel filter on it as well and um, we'll do the same test again Okay, the new complete module assembly is in. I've just put some absorbent paper there for the spilt over fuel. Um, let's go to the front of the car, do the same test. We've got the new fuel filter on, so we're gonna have to fill that and bleed pressure first, but we wanna start this up. We wanna make sure that our scope's getting 12 volts, and then we wanna look up and see that we're building pressure. So let me just put the key on. The key's already on. Hopefully this is gonna go. So let's go. You can't probably can't hear that, but obviously we're trying to fill that fuel filter, so that's why it's taking a bit to come up, but you definitely can't hear that pump. And my light is dead on my torch. As you can see, got 12 volts there. You probably can't hear that, but that fuel filter is slowly filling up. I'm just gonna let that fill, but you can see here, we're definitely done, we're fixed. So we've just stopped, our test has stopped, it's gone down. Let me just do that again. 12 volts, bang, it's gone up straight away. So there we go. Just gonna take this for a drive, take the fuel pressure tester off it, take it for a drive and make sure it's a thousand percent. And then we'll go from there, but I'll quickly show you what we found on the old module when we took it out. So that's our module and look at that split hose coming straight off the pump so clearly this pump was working hard obviously try, try and make pressure to compensate for that leak and who knows about that fuel filter but I dare say that's what's caused the premature failure of it and as you can see it's the whole module assembly we get the whole thing so swap that straight over. Alrighty we are back from the road test and the car drives absolutely fantastic goes like a bit of a rocket now actually so uh, that is fixed and uh, customers on their way nice and happy. Thanks for watching. See you next time